Hey everyone, Duke Nugget 3 d here with a fuck ton of optical masks, and that is because I am here to announce the completion of my first official commissioned restoration, and that is of Older Masks Are Best's M2 10 6 Army Lightweight Optical Mask. Now, I'm not, this is not going to be a historical review. I have plenty of other videos on this mask before I have completed the restoration that cover the history of it. This is more just going to be me showing off what I did to it and kind of discussing the various masks involved in its completion. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. So, um, right off the bat, the hardest thing about restoring this mask in the first place was repairing the gash on the side of the face piece. If you recall that this mask was demilitarized at some point to uh, prevent it from being used again, there there was a huge cut on the side and I uh, managed to patch that up. And that is still amazingly holding strong. It is not showing any uh, signs of tearing or uh, breaking. Uh, the glue is like that that I applied to the interior uh, because I obviously couldn't apply a patch to the inside due to the textured rubber. The glue I applied over that cut from the inside um, is holding very well. It's not splitting at all. It's uh, I can flex this thing and it will basically stay strong. Um, but probably the second hardest part, actually no, even harder than the patch even, was getting this hose. So originally me and Older Masks Are Best uh, had a agreement that he would look for a, a, a trashed M3 lightweight uh, service mask that I could steal a hose off of and that was turning out to be troublesome due to boomers bidding them up constantly and making them go for way more than we really anticipated to pay for a parts mask so what we ultimately decided on was if he would send me a brand new m 2 10 a 16 in mint condition I would take my current one and remove the hose off of it and install on his mask and that's actually it turned out to be the better option why is because Obviously, this mask here, the face piece, is made by Sieberling Rubber Company. As it turns out, the M3 hose on my original M2 10A16 is also made by Sieberling Rubber Company, which means that the quality and finish of the neoprene is exactly the same. Like, it's basically made for this mask at this point. So, I, I think if we went ahead and tried to look for an M3 lightweight to scavenge a hose off of, it would have been an like an entirely different quality. It would have been just, you know, not the same company. And this way, everything matches up perfectly, and I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm not too fond of the fabric tape that I have on hand. It's a little bit sort of, it has sort of a bluish, I don't want to say bluish, but it's just not as dark as the World War II tape. But it's a good placeholder for the time being. And I should also mention that the... Uh, M2 10A16 that I had prior actually belonged to Wasp Freak. Some of you may know him on YouTube. He did a review on this mask, and I'll probably link it in the description so you can see what it would have been like complete. And you can also, or before I bought it, I actually bought this mask in um, 2013. It was actually my very first restoration that I ever did. And it's a little sad having to piece it apart, um, but it goes to a better cause. It's obviously a much rarer and more valuable mask, and having it more, uh, uh, entirely complete is a bit of a priority. So, plus, I, I, I have a brand new M2 10A16, as you can see, and this, I have a, uh, a spare M2 face blank, to, face blank to basically fool around with and just, you know, experiment with, I guess. But, anyways, uh, I was, the, the brand new M2 10A16 that I got here is dated 1952, and it is made by Firestone Rubber, and if you could sort of see the stamps there on the side there, you probably can't. Um, you can also, I'm just very pleased with this, because... Um, it was pretty dirty when I got it. Uh, there was a lot of blooming that would not even come off with acetone. I don't even know what it was. Mostly on the hose, there was just a lot of brownish, rust-colored stuff between the corrugations. And an application of silicone spray cleaned it right up, and so it looks brand new, basically. So, not to say that this was used, because it was mint and unissued, but um, it was quite dirty when I got it. I'm not exactly sure why, but also another hilarious thing to note is the difference in mold quality, because this... My Wasp Freak's M2 10A16 was made by Continental Rubber, and this one's Firestone. And the Firestone one looks like it was punched in the face because it's all scrunched up between the eyepieces. Uh, this may just be due to the mask being improperly stored in its uh, packaging when it was unissued, but who knows? <sighs> Anyways, getting that out of the way. Whoop. I mean, I get that. Let's get on to the contents of the M2 10 6 kit, which I will be giving back to. Uh, older masks are best once we figure out a payment for the restoration. Starting off with the carrier here, this is also the carrier that came with um, Wasp Freak's M210A16, and 
this would not be entirely like this, it would not be the typical carrier you would see with an M2 106 because they would not be using recycled um, lightweight service mask carriers like this where they cross it out and stamp optical mask. The actual carriers for the M2 106 would just be stamped Army lightweight optical mask with no evidence of repurposing. But uh, it's it's possible that it could have been a uh, uh, you know they could have done this. And besides, it's a the way I could tell this is an older carrier, it really works out in this way because, as you can see by the uh, lift the dot uh, tabs and the also, also the uh, the waist strap here, these are made out of OG103 materials. This is a transitional M6 carrier, which means it's more wartime and it was uh, it was not re dyed OG107. Like as you can see here, this uh, carrier for the M2 10916 that I got brand new. It is entirely dyed OG 107. There is not a scrap of uh, OG 103 or any other shade of OG uh, on this thing. So this is technically an earlier carrier that will be coming with uh, the M2 10.6. He will be also receiving a C3 waterproofing kit for the canister. Uh, the plug is also interesting. Uh, like These are always made by Seabrilling Rubber Company. I, I have not actually seen one of these that was not made by Seabrilling. Uh, the card is a little, it has a little bit of a, a crack there on the edge, but otherwise it's all intact. You probably put some tape over that or something. I originally did in the past, but I didn't like how it looked, so I took it off. So uh, Everything's there. Everything's functional. A uh, little tag here that was on the mask I have taken off, and I'm going to be sticking that in the carrier bag in one of the pouches. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's probably some sort of museum tag, because I would assume this mask came from a, a museum lot or of some sort. I'm not entirely sure, but it's going in with the kit, nevertheless. And have a wartime era anti-fogging cloth, or anti-dimming cloth, that is not the 1950s type, which, had, which was made of a... Uh, had a lighter gray paint scheme and it had a screw off top rather than this twist and pull off top. Um, so that's going in with it. Then finally onto the mask itself, give you a good look at the canister here, which is a bit interesting to note because it's originally an M2 10.6 would obviously use an M10 canister, hence the name M2 10.6, referring to the M10 canister. However, there has been at least one example of a M2 10.6 with an M10A1 canister. Uh, and so obviously that we could not source a M10 canister because they're undoubtedly rare. Um, so we, we just stuck an M10A1 canister on this. So technically this is really an M2 10A1 6 as well, but you know, for the sake of difference and you know, identifying it, we're, I'm still calling it an M2 10-6. Uh, the harness is still trashed. He'll probably source a replacement for that eventually. Uh, I'm not too worried about it and I'm leaving it with the kit because it's original to it, but uh, I'm not fond of the harness. It's all trash at this point, but Anyways, everything's uh, functional. I cleaned out the diaphragm assembly. Everything's intact in there and working. The, the valve is clean. Uh, give you a good look at the uh, patch on the side of the face piece here. Nothing much to see there. It's holding very well. And then I will also remove this from the head and show off the interior. Give you a quick look at the size and uh, country of origin stamps. Just I also went through the trouble of cleaning out all the little rust. Uh, this one's still a little bit rusty, but there's uh, all these rivets had rust in them because this is a late war mask, and this is when they switched from using brass rivets to steel. So I cleaned out all the rust and rust uh, treated it with uh, Renaissance wax so that it would not rust again. So let me get this off the head, and I will invert the harness, and I will show off the interior before wrapping up the video. I've already shown off the interior before, but, you know, whatever works. Give me one moment here, because this harness is a pain in the ass, because it's so loose. Alright, so, moving on to the interior here. You can see... Uh, I will, once I get this thing fixed. Uh, you can see the interior is completely clean as well. I even went through with a Q-tip and water and cleaned out all the dirt inside the rivets, because these were just caked in dirt. Um, and just, everything's immaculate now. The speech cone is... Uh, as you might have seen in the previous review, is completely discoloration free for the most part. There is no dry rot visible on it now that I've reinstalled it. There is some dry rot, but it's all on the uh, areas underneath the tape and such, so it is not visible and it is looking much immaculate now. Uh, you can see the section of glue where I applied over the tear, and as you can see, flexing that, bending it, it is not tearing at all. So, very pleased how that came out. And that's pretty much it. Um, Again, this will be going back to older masks are best once we have figured out payment, and I, I had a lot of fun with this. This is for a first official 
um, commissioned restoration for another person and not just my own masks. Uh, I'm very pleased with how this turned out and I'm a little bit jealous of him that he's getting this because I actually kind of want it now that it's just this perfect looking. But, you know, business is business. So that being said, uh, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them in the comments below. And if you have any masks that you want me to restore that are worth restoring, and I say worth restoring because there are masks that, you know, I could restore, but it's... You know, it's, it's still a lot cheaper to just buy a whole new mask if you're just going to come to me and say, Duke, restore my GP5. I'm, I mean, I could do it, but it's going to cost you more than what one is worth. So, um, anyways, that being said, I'm Duke3. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you all later.